Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna take a look at another DMVPN specific topic. And this is going to be how to control interesting traffic that might ride over the spoke to spoke tunnel. And this is actually gonna be, uh, the way that I'm going to transition into the next video that we do is gonna be with per tunnel quality of service. And how that comes into play, that can be, um, kind of cumbersome to get working if you've never dealt with it before. But um, in this video, we're going to be focusing on focusing on repeating myself, <laughs> uh, determining what traffic can or cannot be allowed to go across the spoke to spoke tunnel. And that's really the goal of our, um, our goal here. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's actually pretty easy to do. And you might say, okay, why would I care? Well, there might be, you, you might want, not want all traffic to go across the spoke to spoke tunnel. You might only want certain traffic to go across. Uh, and normally speaking, I'm going to see things like voice over IP or extremely, extremely low latent traffic uh, that needs to be direct to the, to the remote spoke, um, stuff like that. But beyond that, in most cases, it's not that big of a deal if you have traffic go through the hub uh, stuff like that, but we're going to take a look at exactly how this comes into play. So uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into that now. Configuration wise, relatively straightforward. We're going to be demoing this on uh, CSR 11, which is down at the bottom. Go ahead and drag this up. So on CSR 11, if we do a show on iOS 19, go ahead, or I'm sorry, switch 19, sorry. Uh, we do a show IP interface. Brief, we're going to see a loopback 100, which is 192.168.100.19, and Nexus 20. Go ahead and log in to the switch. If we do a show IP interface brief, we're going to see a loopback 100 over here. We have a 192.168.200.20. So what this basically is going to allow us to do is traffic that's going loopback zero to loopback zero will not be permitted to go spoke to spoke, but traffic loopback 100 to loopback 100 or simulating uh, some specific prefix, sub prefix. And if, you, if you've done your, uh, the necessary homework that you need to do, so example would be if you're working, and I, I did this specifically for a customer a long time ago, and we ended up having to use that as a way to transition traffic to the hub and it had to be uh, inspected before it went out to the internet. We couldn't, or between spokes. We couldn't just let traffic go directly between the spokes unless it was voice over IP. So um, that's basically how you would come into play. But in order for this to work, you really have to uh, think about how this would affect or, or how your network is built, really. So if you have everything in one big slash 16 or 18 or 20, uh, summary address from the spoke, you're kind of going to have to uh, break out the more specific routes to be determined based off of the ACL. So what we're going to go do is on CSR 11, and it's not that it's not supported on the iOS devices. It is, but in this case here, I don't want to do everything on iOS. I want to do a combination of things on the CSRs as well. So from here, we're going to create an access list and we're going to basically say uh, IP access list, and it's gotta be a numbered access list. So we're gonna say extended, and we're gonna say 100, and we're gonna permit, or in this case here I have enter key, we're gonna permit uh, 192. Dot, or sorry, permit IP uh, from host 192.168.100.19 to host 192.168.200.20. Pretty straightforward configuration. So. Um, if you had a, a prefix, you could match on any number of things. You could match on the uh, DSCP value, like the EF forwarding, um, the prefix, uh, the type of service value, whether it's IP precedence 5. You, you can match on a number of attributes. Um, how you go about doing that is up to you. But in this case here, it's just easy to do a match on IIP. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath interface tunnel 1. And I would type an IP H NHRP and then the interesting or the interest and then the ACL number is 100. Okay, so by doing that, we'll be squared away. And that's all we have to do. Show IP access list. 
we're going to have one ACL. So now if I go to switch 19 and I do a, uh, a trace route to, uh, let's say 20.20.20.20 from 19.19.19.19 with a numeric display, I'm going to be forced to go through the hub. So if we repeat that again, trace route IP to 20.20.20.20 from 19, 19, 19, 19. Yes, we're going to do a numeric display. We have to go through the hub. Now, if we go, um, if we do a trace route IP to 192.168.200.20 from 192.168.100.19, numeric display, yes. We're going to see the first one goes through the hub, right? But that's because of the fact that we had to wait for phase three to kick in. If I do that same thing again, all the way through, we're going to see that we go directly to the spoke. So we go up to CSR 11, and we do a show IP NHRP. We're going to see that we have a connection directly to uh, the iOS 25 for that particular prefix. And if we show IP access list, we're going to see that we have one match. And that's going to be how we are able to direct traffic over the tunnel, spoke to spoke, versus over the the hub to the spoke. So it'll still get to the, the hub, or get to the spoke through the hub. It'll be a phase one, or like a phase two type of operation, right? So we're basically treating the, that traffic like phase two. It's going to go through the hub to get to the spoke. That's okay. Um, in most cases, a phase one, you're going strictly spoke to hub or hub to spoke. There is no spoke to spoke communication at all. With phase two and phase three, there is spoke to spoke communication, as you can see. But we're forcing the traffic to go through the hub of phase two if we have the ACL in place. Kind of a nice little transition in how we get stuff to work. But that's one of those things that comes into play with... Um, getting this operational. That's pretty straightforward for the most part, as you can tell. Um, in the next video, we're gonna do per tunnel QoS, and we're gonna keep it really basic, although it can get very, very, very complicated very quickly. Uh, I've configured it on to do both hub to spoke and spoke to hub communication. It gets really convoluted very quickly. There's lots of things going on, but we'll talk about that in the next video and how that comes into play. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.